All right, now this section is going to address section 3.4, Transformations of Functions. Now, what I have written here is just an overview of some things that you need to kind of start to focus on. But, you know, you have the ability to take your graphing calculator and then do your, uh, your common functions, what we call parent functions, on the graphing calculator. For example, take x to the second power and see what that looks like all right so we have a graph okay now i'm going to go ahead and um, show you a couple of them all right so we have that all right now it's hard maybe perhaps to see but you can get the general idea now y equals and if i go ahead and clear that out and put let's say the uh, square root square root of x and I graph it, it gives me what the parent function looks like. And along with that, it also gives me some of the parameters. Hey, remember that we can't take the square root of negative values, but we can for zero on. So it gives us some particular values as well, if we so choose. But the point is, is you need to start remembering what the parent function looks like. Now, these certain functions, these parent functions, and there's many of them. There's the absolute value function, there's the quadratic function, the square root function, and in other sections, we learn about these different parameters about these functions and what they look like, okay? Now, when you're tasked with transformation, you're applying transformation to these parent functions. So the first things that they do in the beginning of this process is that they ask you, here's a linear function, for example, okay? It's a identity function, this one is, okay? And you can graph that by just simply, again, taking your calculator and just doing y equals x. And then seeing what that graph looks like. And that's the identity function. Okay, so anyway, they're, they're taking those, the, the, the parameters of that, and they're asking you to graph both of them, graph the parent function. Now, graphing the parent function is just taking and doing that and going up one over one. And there's the one graph, and then we go ahead and say, well, what does it do when we do negative five? So you could take your graphing calculator, and you can say, well, what happens if I do x minus five? All right. And then I graph that. And I can see that it goes down. All right. Let me try to improve the quality of this image. All right. And you can see that it goes down. Okay. Now, with that being said, you can go ahead and just simply just take from, go from here, go down five units, and go up one over one. And we have our answer. Okay. And the graph of the function shifted downwards, okay? It shifted down and it shifted five units. All right, so we just say five. Now I go ahead and just show you the answers here, okay? Now, and what that looks like, I went ahead and showed you, okay? Now the absolute value. How you get to the absolute value on your graph and calculator is y equals, let's clear out these, and you go ahead and come up back here, hit math, num, abs, okay? And then that's the absolute value function. And what that looks like is a V-shaped like looking figure. Now, what happens when you go ahead and do the same thing, math, num abs x minus one and what does that look like it moved it to the right one unit see how that works see so use your graph and calculator for this section 90 percent of this you'll use your graph and calculator all right now i will be talking quickly through some of the parameters of change but it all will follow along with a simple directive. It's going to 
change vertically, be stretched horizontally, being stretched vertically, being, you know, all this stretching and shrinking and all this stuff. And it's not actually that complicated. Okay. Now this one, as I just indicated through the graph that I gave you, it's shifting one unit to the right. And that's what you'll see here. One unit horizontally to the right. And that's what they want you to do along with they want you to graph it. Okay. And that's what this looks like. Oh, well, oh, there it goes finally. All right, so it shifted. Now, this is right here saying, well, this is going to be vertical where this is going to be horizontal. So this is going two units up. All right, so two units up. That's what it does, vertically shift. And it's also going to go two units to the uh, left, not to the right. Negative goes to the right positive goes to the left so this one's going to the left but it's not even asking us to do that it's just asking us to say how is it being impacted how is it shifting now this one is the parent function is the quadratic so the quadratic looks like that so they want us to graph the parent function because it's a u-shaped like looking figure so it looks like this right and now something happened to it that made it go rotate. Okay, rotation is going to be reflection over the x-axis when this guy right here is negative. Any one of these. When this guy here, A, is negative, it will rotate it or, um, or flip it, uh, per se, over the x-axis. Reflection. Reflect over the x-axis. When c is negative that will reflect over the y-axis okay now in this case it did reflect over the x-axis and the vert the vertex right here moved down three units and it moved over to the right two units so it now looks like that okay so what we can do then is say, well, this the parent function is a um, the x squared. All right, that's the parent function. And the graph of the new equation, or the you know, the graph this one particular here, is going to be where it reflects over the x-axis. But before I put that two, it moved over two units to the right. So I'm going to put negative two. And then put that in parentheses, put two, and then put it moved down three units, so it's going to be minus three. So this reflects it, this moves it over to the right two units, and this moves it down three units. And that's our answer. All right. So this takes a little bit of getting used to. All right, when you're going trans uh you know changing from this. Now, this is the absolute value function. It's also reflected over the x-axis so it's going to be similar to this but the absolute value function is a little the two lines and it moved four units down four units to the left or right excuse me so that's negative so we're going to go ahead and put negative four negative four and then the negative is there okay so this one very similar to this one all right now, this one is the cubic function. Now, you want to go ahead and um, just type it into your graphing calculator. To type in the graphing calculator for the cubic, all right, get focused. There it goes. You go ahead and go y equals, clear out this absolute value. You're going to want to hit um, x, and then you could do power and then three if you want, okay? I also would say you can also do X, let's clear that out. You can also do X math and then three. So there's two different ways to get that. Now that looks like this, and it's what we have there, okay? So the parent function of this is the cubic function, all right? Now this thing went up, three units, but also went to the 
the left two units. So that's going to have to be then where the function looks like it didn't get reflected, right? It didn't get reflected over the x-axis, nor did it get reflected over the y-axis. So then we have the function then looks like, well, it's no negatives. So it's going to be where it moved two units to the left. So that's going to be that. But then look at this. I put a three there. And then it moved up three units. So it's going to be positive three. So there's our function for that one. So we're looking at that. Now, wait a second. There's a three here. I wanted to share it with you why that is. Okay. Now, when we are talking about the cubic function, okay, I want to point this out to you. When we go ahead and do second graph, the cubic function has a very fine selection of values, okay? That when you square or cube these values, your expectations are presented here. So when when it was when we go one unit, all right, to the left or to the right, it should be at one one or one negative or negative one negative one. All right. So when we look at this one, okay, and we go one unit, just one unit to away from this coordinate point. All right. So this is where that changes. It's like at the it's at the point. Uh, let me see, correct. It's at this point that we're concerned with, all right? When we're one unit away, it should be one unit high. But then when we go one unit, all right, it's not it's not at this point right here, all right? It is three units away from it. So that means it must have, that one has been multiplied by three to get the three, right? Because it's three units away from it. So why then the value of our function has a stretching motion going on is that number three. Why we have three right there. So the only time you're going to put a function without the three or, or a vertical shifting or stretching is when you're exactly one unit, like when you're at a diagonal from it. All right. If it was here, then it would be compressed or vertically shrunk. But this is being vertically stretched, all right? Another indicator of that is, of course, if we go one, we should be here, but we're not. So it's gonna be one, one, two, three is up here. So then that means it's been vertically stretched by three units. That's the easiest way to do it, okay? And I'm gonna show you another one of that here shortly. Now, this right here, the absolute value should also be where it's a one-to-one -one relationship, but it's not. It goes one unit and then one, two, three, four units. So that's been vertically uh, shrunk. Vertically shrunk means you're going to get a fraction of one over four. Okay. One over four on that one. Now this one's been, this is the absolute value. Okay. But now it's going to be negative. The answer here is going to be negative one fourth of the absolute value, and it's been moved over to the left. So I'm going to put one plus one here, and it's also been raised two units. So I'm going to go ahead and put that as the answer. All right. So we have to be careful with this stretching and shrinking stuff that goes on on these. Okay, you have to be conscious of them, of the vertical and horizontal sh shifting. Now, this one is the cubic root function. So the cubic root function is paramount that you use then this. Y equals, go to clear that out, and hit math, and the cubic root function is at number four. All right, number four. That's the cubic root function. And you go ahead and hit X. And you can see how this looks like the cubic root function. Now, this thing should, again, if we look at this, okay, 
The cubic root function should go, for when we take one unit away, it's at one, all right? One unit away, it's at negative one. So it's taking on that property, all right? But now let's see if that's the case here. When we're one unit away, we're at one. One unit away, we're at one. Okay, it's on the cross sectional is what I mean by that. So that it means it did not get vertically shrunk or vertically stretched. So we're, we're working on trying to understand that component. So now that means that all we're doing is moving it one time to the right or left, excuse me, and then five units up. So, or excuse me, not five units up, but four units up. It's here, it's not this one that we're worried about. It's this one right here. Okay, so one unit to the left, four units up. So what I wanna do is come here, do this, and then I want to go ahead and hit math for x plus 1 and then positive or plus 4. And that, that is what we'll see there. Okay. So this is a cubic root function. And this looks a little wonky, but it is, in fact, the cubic root of x. It's this one right here, by the way. All right, so this is the same way of writing that. Okay. Just so you can see it written in the calculator. All right, and that's what we get here. Now, this is the square root function, and that, again, is found on second math or not second math excuse me second x squared it's right above there there's a square root function or thing so we're going to go ahead and write that in and then we graph that and there it is all right it's sometimes distracting seeing the other graphs so we're going to clear them out all right so we have that all right now, what happened to this one? Okay, so now second graph, remember, zero and then one unit, one. So one unit, one is the same stretching and vertically shrinking as this. So in other words, no vertical stretching and shrinking. So that's good. So it's one. All right, now that means it's been moved the coordinate point of zero, zero which is what we're looking at right here, zero, zero. Now, when we move that from there, where did it move? It moved three units to the right and four units up. So we wanna go ahead and write that in there. We would go ahead and write it in as X minus three, four units up plus four. And there it is. Okay, it looks very similar to what we have there. All right, so that's what we're looking for. All right. Now, this one, look at this. It should be at one, one unit away, it should be at one, but it's not, it's only half of it. So it's a half. So that's one's gonna be 0.5. So it's also negative. So our answer is negative one half of, and this is a cubic root function. And it moved, it moved um, four units down. So that's what that looks like, okay? So, yeah, and if you if you think about it, uh, with the cubic root function, if you take, let's say two, and you square it, or excuse me, cube it, I'm sorry, uh, you cube that value of two, it's gonna be eight, right? Because two times two is four, four times two is eight. But when, we move this two units away from here, one, two, we go up one, two, three, four, not eight. 
So that's half of what we should expect it to go up. So that's why it's been vertically shrunk. That's the best explanation I can provide to you. Now, this is not in the standard form, a cubic function looking like this. And when it's not like that, and it looks like this, then you know it's been reflected about the, uh, the uh, x-axis, excuse me. Okay, because this, what this goes up and this comes down. Now, unfortunately, this could also look like it's a uh, vertical uh, or Y transformation too, because the bars would land on itself if you do it this way too. So you gotta be careful. And you gotta just look at the way the graph is represented. But this one is what it is. Okay. Now, this one right here, it wants you to take the coordinate points and just simply follow take this graph and move it two units uh, up. So you take this, move it two units up, take, take this, move it up two units, and then go ahead and move this one up two units and be down right here. So that's all we're doing. And then hit, uh, okay, there we go. Now, I just right clicked it. Now I do the same thing for this, this moving three units, to the uh, left. So I take this one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, excuse me. And then I move that also the same distance, one, two, three. And then same thing, move it one, two, three. I right clicked it and got away from it. All right. This one is reflecting about the Y axis so reflecting over the y-axis i'm going to put it put it over here a dot put over um let me see over here that's two yeah and then come over here put it at three all right so i got that one all right and then this one's reflecting about the x-axis. So put it over here. I just moved that one down here, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and put it over here because that's this one right here is moved over here. And then I'm gonna put this over here. And that's it. And then I'm gonna submit all parts and get it all completely right. Okay, so this one's really is easy. I mean, and you can do that to a lot of this. Like all it is is, uh, see it said double click the last point, by the way. All right, so graph this. I'll do it one more time. So we're gonna go ahead and reflect it, or not reflect it, excuse me, but move it two units to the, to the left. So two units to the left. Two units to the left. Two units to the left, two units to the left. I like that double click thing. I mean, right click works too, but submit answer. And well, voila, I got it right. I mean, and you you know, it's fun act, it's a fun activity. So follow the, the concept. This is reflection over the x-axis. So, you know, and then make sure you do it. This one's a reflection over the x-axis. All right. And just move your coordinate points. That's all you got to do. Okay, the same thing here. You're moving it to the um, to the left four units, moving it down two units. Reflecting it over the Y axis and moving it two units down. All right, reflecting over the X axis, moving it four units to, to the left and four units up. And then, this is what it looks like, okay? Just in case people are wondering, okay? Just so you guys are aware, 
All right, now this right here is asking us to describe, okay, to the parent function what's happening. Now this is moving four units up. So you look for where it says shifting four units up. And here it says shift the graph four units up. So this is what you select. All right, and that, that goes with what's aligned to what's happening. And then you go ahead and physically graph it four units up. So you want to make sure you select this, hit this, and it automatically draws out what kind of function looks like. And so we have that. And I go ahead and answer it, all right? And submit all parts, we'll get it all right. If we don't, then there's some mistake we made. But it's right, so you got one out of one point, okay? And you do the same thing for this. I mean, there's a lot of re a repetition of this going on. So you just go ahead and reflect it over the x-axis, move it three units to the right, and then you re you reflect that based off of what's going on here, and then you you'll draw the parameters of that exact transformation. Okay, pretty straightforward. Absolute value: you're moving one unit to the right, moving it one unit up, and it looks like this. And you know what? You can actually literally put this into your graphing calculator if you you feel uncomfortable graphing it. So this moves pretty quick. All right, this one is being compressed or vertically shrunk. So it's being compressed, vertically compressed by a factor of four. All right, so we, we try to align to what's happening with this vertically compressed by a factor of four. Okay. All right, so we have the idea of this. Now, much of this isn't changing. It's, it's just giving you a lot of different problems that you select it, and you go ahead and tell what's going on. Like this is being what? Um, well, here, this one is being vertically, um, vertically stretched two units. So uh, vertically stretched two units. It's being reflected over the y-axis and it's being moved up seven units so you go ahead and find all those to be what's under here all right shifted seven units up vertically stretched by factor of two reflect the graph of, of f about the y-axis which i've indicated all of those to you and then of course you can use your graph calculator to do that now I'm going to punch this all into my graphic calculator to show you how you can do that. I mean, I hope that um, that you can figure it out, but in case you can't, all right, we're going to come to graph. Um, excuse me, we're going to come not to this graph, but come to here. We're going to clear all this out. All right, now, this is, in fact, the square root function, so we put the square root function in. And then we just plug in the two square root function and then negative put use this for the negative okay don't use the minus key use the negative key and then minus x and then move out of the radical and then plus push plus seven and then now you can see what happens this is the original graph and then the other graph is up here now so then that's what you're looking for for your answer and see i have it there okay how you graph that you just select it you can go literally you can go ahead and uh, just use this as an example but it's going up seven units all right and then instead of going here you go here um uh, uh, let me see Yes, it's getting a little goofy. I'll clear it all. Trying to do it all for you. Okay, so move it up seven units. There we go. All right, so it's going up two because it's being perfectly stretched. All right. So um, that's, uh, hold on now, we're, I moved it over too far. So I can clear that all. 
I gotta move it here. There we go. That's what we have here. Okay. Now it looks kind of goofy on here. Let's see if I got this one right because it only moved up seven units. So, and it's being reflected over the y axis. Let's see if I got this one right. And it looks like this is operating really slow. Sorry. Oh, I didn't finish it. I didn't put all the answers here. Okay, so um, just by following this, shift it up seven units. Where's the, yeah, there we go. That has been reflected over the Y axis and vertically stretched. Okay. So I got all that right. So. Uh, I, that was just an example of how you can use technology to accompany the graphing. And so you can go ahead and do the same thing for these, okay? There's a lot of these. So they're just challenging you and just different uh, constructions and configurations of them. So that is, that is in a nutshell, all the uh, different graphing techniques for transformations.